It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. I'm here, as always, Austin Peterson with my co-host, Landon Mance. And we are excited to have in studio, or not actually in studio, but on the show with us today, Scott Buss with Advent Jets here in Phoenix. Scott, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Landon. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate your time. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. And we, you know, we talked for a few minutes before uh, the program and got to know a little bit more about you personally. But we always like to start by having our guests tell a little bit about themselves personally, kind of how you got to where you are today. Tell us about your family, if you're married, if you have kids, any of that kind of stuff, so our our viewers know a little bit more about you personally. Sure, I appreciate that. So I'm originally from the Midwest, which uh, a lot of people in the Arizona areas where I'm located, Scottsdale, originally from the Midwest, went to college for about uh, one class, dropped out, pretty much self-taught, and didn't know what I wanted to do, so I kind of went the car business route, learned finance, so then I went into the mortgage real estate for about 20 plus years. And uh, basically why I was doing all of that, um, I'm a very spiritual person. So I always sit and say, you can pick and choose your boyfriend, your spouse, your girlfriend, your house, your car, but you can't choose your purpose. God does. And so my purpose all my life was building these relationships that I didn't know were going to into Advent Jets, which I now formed a couple of years ago. And so that brings me to today was now I'm in Scottsdale the last eight years, Advent Jets the last couple of years, private aviation about seven years. And uh, not married, no kids. Um, I do have a rescue dog. Um, and that's, that's about it with me, kind of a basic Midwest guy. Well, tell us about the rescue dog, at least. I mean, what are we, what are we looking at here? He's, he, you, 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 this is kind of a funny story. I'm six foot six, so I got this little 17-pound shih tzu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he may die with you putting your socks on one day. Exactly, exactly. He's kind of a small little guy, but I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I, I love dogs. I and uh, we've we've got a golden doodle. It's actually okay. our second golden doodle. Yes. Um, the last one passed away with cancer a few years ago, and so we replaced it with a with a new golden doodle. Sorry um, to hear that. Yeah. Well, it's you know it's their family. It it is, and and he was. How about now? Oh, I can hear you. Back for both of you. Okay, where did you where did you lose me? <laughs> we were talking about dogs. Did you hear about my seventy five pound golden doodle? No, I no 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 sir. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, second golden doodle for us. We we love dogs in my family. Um, one that passed away a few years ago. I think you heard that part because you you said you were sorry about that. Um, but yeah, Brody's our new dog, and he's definitely a member of the family. The temperament is great. Um, it's, you know, for those who don't know what a golden doodle is, it's a golden retriever poodle mix. And we have a little bit more golden in, in ours. And so he sheds a little bit, which is a little frustrating to a guy like me who uh, is allergic to pet dander and, uh, and likes things clean. So, sure. <laughs> it's, uh, but he, he doesn't shed too much. So we're, we're happy with him and he's a great dog. The temperament is, is fantastic. Obedience. Great. Allergic to dogs? I thought you were going to say maybe OCD. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a there, too. is a there is a little bit of that in there. I think I think the older we get, we all get that. <laughs> yeah, 
No, there's definitely that. I'll I'll tell you when when the video came on and Landon joined and I re- I realized that he was wearing the same shirt as he wore last week's episode. I thought, man, I sure hope nobody wears the watches two episodes back to back. Landon's that, wearing the same shirt as last week. This those, guy, those go- the Golden Knight shirt. <laughs> hey, hey, you know. That's right. I mean, at third least, third at least. season made it to the playoffs again. I, I I'll give it to you. I was gonna say at least put on a Raider shirt after the. I was gonna say the same that. thing. At least put on a Raider shirt. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched <laughs> a couple minutes of that game last night. Landon, you didn't think this call. Was, you didn't think this call was gonna be about throwing you under the bus, did, did oh. you? Oh, he no, did. No, I expect <laughs> I expect a, at least one or two jabs every call. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so Scott, um, you. Uh, you're a high energy guy and uh, I, I love it because you can just pick up on it and you can feel it and and it, it changes the atmosphere which is really which is awesome I love it so you you've been in private aviation for seven years obviously something changed something happened something triggered you and you said all right I, I, I think I can do this on my own I can do this better I can do this different Tell us about about that. How did that come about, and and how did you you know start the company? Sure, sure. Great question. I appreciate it. So a lot of entrepreneurs, they take different things from different people, and I'm a perfectionist, so I wanted to take a little bit of everything from different that I could learn from, and kind of say how can I implement that into Advent Jets, but be better and be different, and that's how I formed Advent Jets. A lot of private jet companies out there. They just focus on your basic transportation where it might be just basic ground, your air, and then maybe basic catering. So Advent Jets is kind of like hospitality. The more that you can control your client, the more likely you're going to have a good experience. So I created Advent Jets, your door to destination experience. You need a global chauffeur? I have that. You need a rental car? I have a company that's worldwide. I have that. You need a place to stay? Villas? I So I formed basically everything. So the reason I did that is because wealth advisors, sports agents, tour managers, they like to work with organizations like myself because when they're busy, they don't have to outsource five different people. They can just go to one company and say, oh, okay, we have all the relationships. Let's work together. Yeah, I love that. I was poking around on your on your website before the call and uh, just getting a feel for you and the company, what you guys do. And the laundry list of, of uh, you know, services, but more experiences, yeah. I think that you provide seems incredibly unique. You know, I right. don't have a lot of experience in your field, of course, but um, you know, one thing that I have been focused on in my business as well is the experience, right? Correct. And, you know, one thing that we have done just, you know, just a small little tweak is when our clients come to the office, instead of just having them walk up to our suite like they normally would, we tell them to call us when they get into the parking lot and myself or my practice coordinator, we go down and we meet them in the parking lot and we walk them up. Sure. And right. a couple of times people have been just I mean, wowed by something that simple, but you're doing stuff on a totally different scale. So tell us more about that. Why are you doing all that stuff and how has that led to, you know, growth and success in the company? Sure. Well, um, I appreciate it. And you know what? That's how you start. You start with a little small things and that's what clients remember. I built my business um, on trust and transparency. So basically what I wanted to do is I know – I knew a couple years ago, luxury aviation travel is going to be taken off. Unfortunately, we had the coronavirus. So more people are looking in small, flying in smaller groups, where it's family, friends, businesses, don't have to go through the big terminals. They can fly private. They don't have to deal with all the security. It's just less crowded. And so I wanted to create packages. Give you an idea. A gentleman in the NBA, I worked with one of his good friends. He, they came to me and I helped them facilitate flying, flying rented a, a Bentley for a rental car, rented a yacht for a day, and, and I also helped them rent a villa. So those are the things that 
I can help facilitate and do because most companies don't have the global relationships or they do, but they didn't think about capitalizing it and saying, hey, let's all work together. Let's monetize our relationships and let's do this together. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest difference is if I can add it with nothing against NetJets, Wheels Up, obviously Kenny, the founder of Wheels Up went to Wisconsin where I'm from. A lot of these companies, they require, you got to pay a five, twenty, hundred thousand dollar investment. Then you have to buy 25 hour increments. My company is fly on demand. I do have a membership based program, very minimum, very minimum. It's, not, it's under a thousand dollars, but then you get you get but you get access to all the Hyatt global relationships I have in Scottsdale they own the Royal Palms and you have access to Avis 25% off with all Avis 22,000 locations so what I wanted to do is I wanted to build more off the private jets and build more of a luxury lifestyle management company where if somebody comes to me and says sure COVID I want to go off with Tiger Woods can you facilitate that yes I can do you want to go on a Justin Bieber behind the scenes tour you know, meet and greet, I can facilitate that. So it's anything to do with music, sports, luxury, I can help facilitate. And I just, I just wanted to be somebody different and start the process. Why be a trend? I wanted to go where people wanted to be around. I want to be that person where people want to be around versus starting the business and following everybody else, if that makes sense. Yeah. The the Justin Bieber meet and greet. I Austin will definitely want to connect with you offline for that. I kind uh, of figured he seemed like a Bieber. He seemed like a Bieber. I wasn't sure if it was Taylor Swift or Bieber, but what we can arrange either of them. I, I think I took the words out of his mouth. <laughs> I see him blushing. Yeah. I, I was actually prepped to say, I don't know if you saw the glimmer in, in Landon's eyes when you mentioned Justin Bieber, but <laughs> yeah. he beat the punch first time in his life. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I think you're, you're right. I mean, the, the private aviation industry has, it, it's, it seems like it's kind of popping up all over the place, right? And, and you mentioned NetJets and Jesse Itzler, and, you know, he was kind of, as far as I know, like the first one out there, right? Yep. And, and he was actually a keynote speaker at a conference I was at a couple of years ago. And, you know, he shared some stories that were pretty comical about how, you know, when he got started and he really had nothing, but he was just, you know, gosh, I'll, I'll figure it out and basically showed up and he's telling people like Matt Damon and Janet Jackson and, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this is my plane. Do you want to go? You know, like all that kind of stuff that wasn't even really true at the time. And, and, you know, he's built it into this, huge organization that was what part owner in the Hawks. I mean, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt that he's also married to a, to a female entrepreneur that has buckets of money as well. <laughs> it's, they're, they're doing just fine. Sure. But, um, you know, like, what do you think the future holds? I mean, I think you're doing, and Landon touched on it. You're doing more of an experience business that's based around jets, right? But yep. you're doing much, much more. Do you think that that's the way that it's going to go in the future? You're going to have more and more competitors pop up. What, what is your guess for the future of this industry? If I have competitors, I'm not worried. That just means I'm doing something right. Um, if I think, to be honest, luxury travel is going to be changing, no matter if it's just flying private or you're going to a family vacation. It might be a smaller villa or renting a house. Or for instance, I have a relationship with the Belmont Group which they're big in Italy, uh, Europe. Uh, they only have two places in the States, but they don't have a compound over 200 rooms. So I think kind of what you say, a lot more private. I think we're, we're gonna get back to some normality, don't get me wrong, but I just think there's options out there for people. And the society, you only live one life and people are starting to realize that where if you wanna go to Formula One race in Monaco, I can facilitate that trip for you. If it's not flying private, you want to fly commercial, so be it. I'll still help you and your clients and friends. I will still help you get to the race or get tickets or get on a yacht. Just because it's the private aviation, I have personal friends that fly commercial that they utilize my relationships and connections because it's about monetizing and working with like-minded people. Yeah, so... so I mean, talk a little bit about those relationships that, that you have, right? Because like you said, it's not just about the flying private, you know, sure. there are all these other relationships that you have. And you mentioned Hyatt and Avis, but kind of fill us in on how you got to that point with those relationships and, 
and what they do for you and for your clients? Sure. So a lot of hard work, <laughs> no, a lot of, a lot of networking. So I just stayed persistent. Um, be honest with you. I'm just, a, I work different than what most people do. LinkedIn's anyone out there listening. LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. If you utilize it right, obviously people want to try to sell things on there, but if you utilize it right, and I'm in a different niche, obviously high luxury. So Basically, with the Hyatt, and I'll give you that example, I've just built relationship over emails, and then over phone, and then in person. And then basically what happened is I work with them anywhere in the globe. They got 770 locations worldwide. The Thompson, the Park, the Hyatt, Azure, any, any brand. And so what I do is I have a VIP team that anyone wants to fly anywhere or travel anywhere and stay with one of their um, organizations, I get them obviously a discount rate and they get VIP. Like I just helped a friend go to St. Kitts. Oceanside room was like $225 per night for a suite. So I just build those relationships. It goes back. And I know I preach this a lot. It goes back to my mid rest roots, trust and transparency. If you work with musicians, actors, athletes, when you're dating, it's about trust and transparency. And the more that you can re- be real with these people. Um, that's how I built my relationship. So Hyatt is just one of them. Um, like you said, I have Avis worldwide. They got 22,000 locations. I got a yacht manufacturer in Italy. Um, you name it. I have chefs. I'm actually launching my own um, private catering company. It's called Jet Chefs. We're in the process of launching that. And we're in works with uh, the Tao Group in Hakkasan that want to partner with us. Uh, so I'm very entrepreneur and do, just do a lot of different things. So let me jump in real quick, Austin. Sorry. Yeah. Scott, just real quick. And, and th- we, we could probably spend an hour or two easily on this, but you mentioned something that I'm interested in hearing more about, and I'm sure our listeners are. So you said uh, LinkedIn is a really powerful tool if you utilize it correctly. Talk to us for uh, just a couple minutes about what that means to you and how you've kind of had success with it. Sure. So basically what I would do, and I'll give you an example. You know how people are maybe looking for a job right now? Most people, what do they do? Indeed, Monster, go on in, so, which is fine, but I'm using this as, a, as an analogy, analogy. Basically, look at a company that you want to work with or get to know. Look for an executive with that company. Find them on LinkedIn. Send them a personal note. More likely, you're going to get a better response than just sitting and sending requests, requests, requests. So, of course, I form templates and things like that. But after a given time, you just got to think different. How many, and I use this, how many people are going for that one job? There's a lot of people. And most people don't know HR, they have different keywords that are kicked out if your resume doesn't have this school or this or that. So LinkedIn could be a very powerful tool. Or you might have a connection that knows somebody at that company and you're better off the old phrase of who you know. It's true. It's who you know or who can you build a sincere relationship with. And so LinkedIn's built a lot of relationships. I mean, I've been using it for many years. I don't want to age myself. But the more the last three to five years has really been focused a lot of LinkedIn. I've been using it for about eight years. So, mm mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think it's actually a great tool. It's something that I use frequently. It's how you and I connected to begin with. And I be honest with you, I don't remember if you reached out to me or I reached out to you. Um, I think it was the Justin Bieber. You you asked if I had Justin (laughs) Bieber tickets or something. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, there there was a picture of you with Justin Bieber. And I'm thinking if another bald guy can pull it off, then I can do it. And yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The problem yeah. is you're six foot six. I'm five foot nine. I'm not even sure that I'm taller than Justin Bieber. It's just, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it, it is a fantastic tool and you're right. It has to be used right. Right. Cause I, cause I do, I do kind of the same thing that you're doing in reaching out on LinkedIn and, and Landon and I work with solely bit small business owners, small to sure. medium business owners. And so it's a great place for us to quote unquote prospect. It's a great yep. place for us to find guests on the program. Um, but we also have to be careful in the way that we do it. And so I, I do use some of those templates that you talked about because it, otherwise it, you're going to spend hours a day on LinkedIn trying to make those connections. But those templates can go too far. 
And then you Correct. also have to be careful with what you do after the templated, you know, invite or response or whatever goes out. And so, Correct. Um, Correct. It, it's a role. You're building relationships constantly in, I, I, I say this is people know when people, someone's fake or somebody's through words, but when you get them on the phone or you do a zoom or any meet them in person, you can't, you can't mess around and BS a BS -er. I mean, it's just the truth. And like you said, with LinkedIn, you can only use so much templates, but verbiage, rapport, look at where they went to school. Look at the, if there's something thing in, in the Midwest. It's sales 101. It's building a rapport with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And one of the things that I do that actually gets me the most positive feedback on LinkedIn, so this is a, a secret for you or for anybody listening, is I record a quick video. And I used to do a video that was personalized to the person that, I, that had accepted the connection. But I've gotten to the point where it's just, it's too, too many people. Right? So, <laughs> And so now it's, it's no longer personalized. It's, it's a video that everybody gets, but it's sure. just about 45 seconds of me introducing myself, giving people an opportunity to see what my personality is like, to hear my voice and have that visual connection that you don't get from a static LinkedIn page. Right? That's a great idea. It's a very, people are people like I deal with clients around the world and I call them discovery calls. So we'll have a couple of discovery calls but then because they want to work with me, then they want to see me in person. So then we do the Zoom and everyone's like, I don't want to do Zoom. I don't care if you see what I look like. I mean, <laughs> if we can be friends and business relationships or friendship, but that's a very good, good very solid point. I appreciate you think, sharing that. Yeah. And, and you've got to be authentic and personal too, right? I mean, I, my video says something to the effect of, you know, I'm standing in my office and I have a sign in my office that says, um, what does it say? Take me out to the ball game. Right. And I've got some others that say I, I'll take a hot dog at the ballpark or a steak at the Ritz any day or, you know, something like that. Right. Sure. And so I, I said, as you can see, I love baseball. Right. And that gives them an idea of, you know, just who I am and what my sure. personality is like. And they get to, they feel like they know me personally. Yep. A bit. If I could just add one suggestion, Austin, maybe your new video should have a Bieber t-shirt on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Landon's loving it. Wow. Because somebody's jumping on and, and continuing with his little digs at me. So that's, he loves this. Yes, I did. <laughs> you know, you would, you would think that I greased his palm before this conversation. I mean, I didn't, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to grease it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point though. And maybe, maybe I'll actually just sing a couple of, uh, you know, bars from a Justin Bieber song. If there I you go. There you go. Of, a little karaoke. I could think of one. Landon, you could probably help me out. With yeah, that I, I could. I'm not going to lie. There are a couple of Bieber songs that are pretty catchy. You know, I think we, we all can agree on that. Yeah. We hey, all probably know a couple. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Scott, um, obviously relationships um, is a big part of how you've built your business out so far. But I know, you know, we were talking before the show um, and on your intake form, you've kind of noted that, you know, all of your growth is, is, is pretty, you know, organic. Mm -hmm. So clearly you're, you're good at building relationships. That's a big focus of yours. But what, you know, what else have you done or what else are you doing to help, you know, get the word out, marketing, PR for the company? Uh, great. Um, basically, to be honest, I don't do a lot of PR marketing. It's a lot of referrals. For instance, I just had a call with Jason Eldeen's tour manager last week. That was a referral. So a lot of it's referrals. However, something that's going to be taken off and no point intending taken off in the next couple of weeks is since I have a relationship with the Hyatt's, Aruba, because commercial flights down to the Caribbean are somewhat limited. So the Hyatt put together something they're going on my website and they're going to be doing a, a meeting with 500 of their travel partners of that advent jets is their preferred vendor for private aviation so i'm going to be on their website they're going on mine it's just staying in front of like-minded people obviously people invest in a good crm system customer retention management system um i say this i have a i have a um memory like an elephant so i'm a very perfectionist different entrepreneur but um, I've never had to spend the money on marketing. I've done things marketing, let me rephrase, a marketing company or PR because I already know the owners of those companies. 
just like with social influencers or agents, I already know all them. They want to be a part of this. We can all work together and let's monetize our relationships. And then when you monetize, it's less that I have to spend out of pocket. <laughs> you work smart. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Absolutely. So, so really, I mean, just so we're, we're, we're clear here. I mean, you really haven't done any or, or a lot of paid advertising or anything like that. It's really just focusing on relationships and, and really honing in on those relationships and just building them stronger and stronger and stronger, which ultimately leads to other introductions. Correct. Correct. Um, I will say one of the things I have an Instagram, I probably did it about started about 14 months ago and I got just over 20,000 followers. Um, Instagram, I've gotten some attention, but like I said, you got your basic, you know, your basic social media, but I've never done any Google ads, Facebook ads. I've never done any marketing like that. Maybe promotion, like little videos on LinkedIn and things like that, but nothing really, Hey, I want to do this or do that. I never really had to, um, my website, I don't even do any SEO to be honest with you. My website, I probably get five to 10 leads a week off of my website because I think in the last 90 days, I got about 2,600 views looking at Google analytics, uh, 2,600 views for my website. That's likely going to double after being on Tycoons of Small Biz, just so you well, that, know. That's great. You just tell me where I need to send a bottle to <laughs> or a check to. <laughs> You're doing some PR now, I'll tell you what. That's good. Well, I appreciate it. That's what it's about is like I said, I don't, and like I said, anything that I can do, Austin and Landon, to help you guys, wherever the, the business is, I have no problem doing introductions because when you love what you do, it's not a job, it's a career. And for me, being the age I am, it's not about the money. When you love what you do and you monetize these relationships and their synergy, the money comes with it. Who cares about the money? When people are focused on material things, it's, it's not going to, people read right through that. So that's why I built this because I have so many different revenue streams, avenues of going. Um, so yeah, I appreciate the, the uh, shout out and being on the program and I look forward to it. And like I said, anything that I can do to help you guys personally and business wise, that's, that's why I was brought into this world. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. We both appreciate that. And, you know, we'll go to break here in just a second and, and hear from one of our sponsors, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate what you said there with, with not it, without it being about the money. Right. And I've, mm -hmm. I've owned multiple businesses over the, I don't know, almost 30 years I've been, you know, I've been a professional sure. and I've had many people that worked for me over the years and they asked for my advice about college and about this and about that. And, and the biggest piece of advice that I give them all is to choose something that you think or know you're going to enjoy doing. Don't choose a career based on how much money that career supposedly Correct. makes, right? Correct. I've got a lot of friends that are miserable attorneys. Sure. They make good money, but they cannot stand what they do. Right? Sure. And, and there are certain areas of the law that, that are really exciting and people enjoy, but the, I sure. have many friends that just aren't super happy in their, in their careers. Yep. They make great money and they chose it based on the money, money that they make. And I, and I agree, Austin, because like you said, I love music. I love sports. I love to travel. Why not cond condense that? And I've had friends that played professional sports. So I've kind of grew up around all of this all my life. So why not be around something you can enjoy? Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, I've got some questions for you about your philosophy with, with college and some other thoughts that, uh, that you may have or advice for our, for our listeners. So Sounds good. Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. Welcome back, Tycoons. We're here with Scott Buss with Advent Jets, and we're having a great conversation about uh, what it is that, that he does in his company, but really more so his philosophy about life and business and relationships, which uh, is really what it's all about in this life. So, Scott, you know, before the break, we were talking a little bit about, you know, advice that we would give to young people or not choosing a career based on how much money you make and doing something that you love, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And before we got started, and you mentioned it a little bit at the beginning about how you just went to one class of, of college, and then you kind of went on your way, and you've been, you know, on your own building businesses and doing different things along the way. So 
Um, the very first guest that we had on this program um, is, is an author of a book called Blue is the New White, okay. right? And he's a big believer in our society has pushed everybody to college and says that's the way to find success. Go to college, go to college, go to college, right? And his belief is that we've pushed way too far that direction. Everybody thinks that the only way they can find success is by going to college. And it's been at the detriment of specifically blue collar jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And not believing that you can have a great career and a great life in one of the trades that's out there, right? Yep. And so I'd love to hear your philosophy, and it doesn't have to be specific, obviously, to blue collar, but, you know, just your thoughts around college. And, you know, you said you don't have kids, but if you had a kid today that was 17, 18 years old and, and trying to figure out what they wanted to do with the rest of their life, what would the advice be that you would give? My advice, follow your heart, follow um, like maybe a tech school, a vocab school, something that, you know, that, that they have an interest in. I, I just believe that with certain fields, like you said, a lawyer, doctor, things like that, schooling is great. Don't get me wrong. I have a learning disability. I'm ADHD. School just wasn't me. And with that being said, if you find some things that you want to do, the best investment somebody can do, invest in yourself. If you hear, you speak, you listen to some of these big authors and they go and speak and you pay to do some of those seminars, you're going to get more out of that in a lifetime than you are going to go learning history, just to pick in history or certain math. I mean, math was my worst subject and I was in the mortgage and real estate for over 20 years. What a, so it's find what you're good at. And I guess I, I don't tell anyone how to parent their kids. That's not what I'm about. However, we're in a pandemic, so-called pandemic right now. You're going to get so many entrepreneurs out of this that created and thought that don't even need to go to college. Look at Shark Tank, prime example. People are always thinking. And like I said, there's a lot of businesses out there that you can do a spin and do yourself where if it's an insurance, wealth advisor, whatever, you might not know everything about it, but that's where you surround yourself with like-minded people and form, the, form a firm together, form a partnership together. Um, and so that's kind of what my, my advice is just follow what you want to do. Um, I, I, I just was lucky enough to be where I'm at and to have some guy, a strong mom. Um, but as far as college just wasn't going to work out for me, unfortunately. And I'm not saying that it's bad for everybody, but you hear all the student debts, you know, 50 to hundred thousand dollar in debt. Now, what if you could go buy a franchise for 50,000 or 25,000 and get a couple people involved and take that franchise to a next level. Now that's real thinking. Most people are like, I'm not a business person. You know what? This is the first business I've ever owned is Advent Jets. I was self-employed within the mortgage and real estate, but this is the first business I've really owned myself. And so if I can do it, anyone can do it. It's just surrounding yourself with like-minded people. So that's, that's my little uh, advice. Um, but like I said, school's not for everybody, but for some people that want to go, I mean, it's great for your freshman year to go and live off and do things. But like I said, it is not for everybody, but um, that's for them to just make the decision. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it's certainly a personal decision. And, you know, I'm thinking as you're, as you're talking and you mentioned a few different, you know, vocations that are out there. And, you know, my, I've got a 17-year-old daughter that's having her wisdom teeth out in a couple of weeks. But I want her oral surgeon to have gone to school and, and know exactly what sure, she's doing. Sure, exactly. exactly. Not, not going to a real estate seminar and deciding <laughs> that he, can, that he can pull teeth now, you know. Yeah, but, no, I agree, I agree with you there. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's really about, and I don't know the answer to this. I mean, I don't, I, I know the oral surgeon a little bit. He lives pretty close. I actually am really good friends with his brother. Huh? Uh, so I, I know him a little bit, but I don't know that if I got him in a, in a room by himself in a quiet room and I said, do you really love what you do? I don't know what the answer would be. Sure. He, he makes great money and he sure. has a really great practice, but I don't know if the answer would be, yeah, I love doing what I do. But I that's a, that's a very, you bring up a question where, Back in real estate and mortgage, I would see people's application. Everyone's trying to keep up with the Joneses, but their debt to income ratio is 60, 70%. They're just trying to keep up. How much is that real happiness? Yeah. For me, it's not. I mean, 
I always say I learned this lesson. Material things can be replaced. Things in the heart can't. I'm a very simple Midwest guy. If I make this much or this much, I'm still the same. Yeah, I might be able to do a little bit more or buy a little bit more. But you know what? It's not. When you get older, it's, you, your principles and life things change. It's about cherishing different things. And, and we all want stability. But when you own your own business, who controls that? You do. Who can do your job better than you? Nobody. So that's why I like that of me being an entrepreneur. But you're right. A lot of people out there are miserable. They're just, they're working nine to five and making other people rich. Yeah. I'll add something to that, Scott. I, I think that's really um, incredible advice and I, I love it. I think um, one of the things I, I think that younger people tend to struggle with a little bit is, is they go to college because they don't have a clue what they want to do. And that I was a prime example of that. And one thing I encourage a lot of people, so I, I mentor uh, these groups of high school students that are, uh, uh, you know, trying to go to college. A lot of them are their, you know, first time college attendees and they're, you know, in their, in their family, uh, you know, family uh, tree. Sure. And, um, you know, I tell them, I say, look, um, a, a great way to try to figure out what some areas or fields of study that you might be interested in is doing internships because it is a, it is a perfect way to work for a company for a short period of time where you don't have to make some big long commitment on your end. The company doesn't have to make some big long commitment on their end. And it just, it gives you an opportunity to see what a, a, an industry is, is all about. And that's exactly how I got into the industry that I'm in now. I was kind of, I'm probably more of a hybrid between you and Austin. Um, you know, you said you just went to school for a very short period of time and then you wanted to go out and create your own destiny. And Austin, uh, you know, he's got his MBA and I've got my bachelor's degree, but I was going to school and then I took about 18 months off. I was actually a professional poker player for a couple of years. Good for you. And, uh, figure I, I, I determined that was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I, I went back to school because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I ended up in an internship for a financial advisor and said, uh, after, you know, um, working for him for a couple of months said, you know, hey, I think, I think I can give this, give this a shot. So that, that's kind of how I got into doing what I'm doing now. So I, I think internships are a great way for people to get exposure into different industries to help, you know, just uh, give them some direction as to what they might want to do. And, and uh, you bring up a valid point and not to change the schooling system, but I graduated high school at 17, almost 18. I didn't know. I mean, you look at today's kids, 18, 17, 19, there's some, no direction. It's phone, it's tech. It's so I think it starts with some of these schools need to have more interaction with different careers in focused in curriculum. If that makes sense. Kind of like what you said, because these kids get out after a couple, two, three years, if they don't go to school, they, they're starting to fall behind, fall behind. They don't know where to go and who to catch up. So a lot of it's mentoring, family. I, I get that, but there should be something, I think schooling, like I remember when I was back in school, I'm aging myself. We never learned how to balance credit cards or do any of that. You know, I'm 20 years old working my first job and I got a $15,000 back then it was a gold card, you know, which back then I'm, I'm 20, 21 years old doing, having a gold card, you know? And so I just think life lessons, I always like book smart, but I say street smarts is where a lot of it is. And that's, you know, you can't take that away from people. And so going back to the school thing, I think some of the schoolings need to change. And I think some realistically, that's why some of the charter schools are more popular because they focus on different, di different um, kind of career paths and stuff. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, you know, I, I don't think the educational system has ever been great in career readiness, right? Correct. I think it was better when, when we were kids. I mean, Landon was a kid a, a week and a half ago, I think. <laughs> He's still a kid. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when, when we were kids, I mean, 
for me personally, my whole life changed my freshman year when I took a, an entrepreneurship and stock market class. At, up until that point, I was sure that law school was where I was headed. I wanted to be a prosecutor or a defense attorney. I wanted to be in the courtroom all the time. You know, I didn't want to be the guy writing and, and reading briefs, but, but I did think that, you know, being in the courtroom would be fun. And then I took this class and I learned about building a business and I learned about how the stock market worked and finance. And, you know, I, I grew up in a very blue collar family. My dad sure. was a stucco contractor, owned his own business, but we never really made a whole lot of money. Um, and so I, I didn't have anybody that was teaching me any of those types of principles. Sure. And I learned them in a one semester class and it was enough to say, gosh, you know what? There's more out there. There's more that I can figure out and, and different things that I can do with my life versus the direction I thought I needed sure. to go. Sure. Yep. No, I totally, I totally agree. It's sometimes just people don't find it and later on in life, unfortunately, you know? Yeah. Like, but my kids don't even have any of that, right? I mean, my, my daughter is a senior in high school and I, I forget exactly how she said it, but you know, a couple of weeks ago, she said something to the effect of, you know, I can, I can calculate these complex equations, but I have no idea what it means to go out and apply for a loan for a car or for a mortgage. And, you know, she and I have certain conversations about pretty simple financial topics Sure. and she's confused. And sure. part of that is, gosh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a certified financial planner. I should have been teaching her this all along. Right. And so part of it's on me that I didn't teach it. Um, but in most homes, the parents aren't capable of teaching correct, because correct. they don't understand it themselves. And they think they're going to get taught that stuff in school, which realistically, some of those curriculums don't teach some of that stuff. And so now, now and I hate to, I, I don't mean to say this in a bad way, some people don't want to homeschool, but I think this opened up a lot for everybody to see, even with the U.S., you know, who we can rely on, who people can have for teaching their kids or, you know, nobody can teach my kid better than me, you know. So I think this changed a lot, maybe for some good, some bad. But like you said, those conversations, if you don't know, you, you know, it doesn't come up. And so it's conversations you got to start looking at as a, as a parent. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, maybe, uh, why don't we, let's circle back to Advent as we kind of, you know, uh, have just n another 10 or 15 minutes. So, um, talk to us a little bit about, um, uh, what, what's the future look like for Advent? You know, what are, what are some of the goals and aspirations that you have for the company? And, you know, the traditional question, I guess, is, you know, where do you see the company in, you know, three to five or 10 years and kind of, you know, what are you, what are you doing to get to where you want the company sure. to be? Sure. Um, a great question. So to be honest with you, um, I've had some investors reach out just because of the, the relationships that we're in as far as travel, private travel. When you build a business, I built it backwards. I built all the relationships and then I had the business. Most people build the business and then go after the relationships. So what I'm looking at is probably Advent Jets is probably going to grow. What capacity, if it's a couple investors or partnering up or sell off, that's probably, however, my hands are always going to be involved somewhat. It's because I can't, I mean, I can let go unless I let go of my exit strategy, then I just travel. But um, I just, I just want to just help people, even if the regular people that can't travel private, but they reach out and say, Hey, Scott, we want to look at a, going on a cruise um, or a yacht, or we want to look at renting a, not an Airbnb, but a villa in Greece or, you know, do some different things. It's about educating. It's just not always for the luxury. And so my plan, I really, I shouldn't say I don't have a plan because I just take one day at a time, even though my, I have a business plan and things like that. I've just been very fortunate to just live a good life. And I can just see, like I said, I'm launching another company called Jet Chefs. Um, private catering. Um, so I have a lot of different things that my hands are in besides the aviation. I'm working on facilitating some real estate of the Seashell Islands. I'm doing some five, 50 million to $200 million pieces of artwork. I do a little bit of everything. I, just because of the relationships that I've built, people will come to me and say, hey, Scott, do you know somebody for this? 
yes, let me help you facilitate. If it's selling diamond earrings or whatever it may be, is you know, and that's what it's about. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I've been burnt many times, but I'm not going to change for anybody. That's just how I was raised. However, karma comes back, and those people I just don't work with anymore. But um, as far as growth, it, it, it's, it's I guess with the pandemic, it's going to go grow even more. I've I've seen an uptake already with tra private travel. Um, Maybe I'll merge with another company. Maybe someone want to invest in them. I don't have to work as much. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I enjoy it. I got, I, I got to ask. So a, a big part of the work that Austin and I do for our clients is, is around um, exit planning. And, yep. and sometimes we forego using that word because exit planning you know, immediately business owners are thinking, no, that's not for me. I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to exit my business right now. But Austin and I, our mission with our clients is to help them to shift their thinking when it comes to exit planning, right? So sure. Because exit planning is really just good. It's just good business. It's good strategy because when you're looking at your business through the lens of a buyer, all it's going to do is open your eyes to opportunities, strengths, weaknesses, threats to your business, things that you can focus on that just make your business more valuable by, you know, helping to de-risk the business. So my question is, you obviously have this mindset and you're only a couple years into owning your own business. So where did this mindset come from and how do we how do we duplicate that so we get other business owners thinking like you? You know, I guess you got to have me on more podcasts. Or, <laughs> no. um, you know, to be to be honest, I, I really don't know. Um, I'm different. Um, everybody's different in their own way. Um, like, I have an exit strategy. It's different. I look at it this way. You get a professional athlete, when they retire, they don't know how to adjust. So what you're saying with these business owners, instead of just exit, Let's taper it down or maybe open up another venture avenue for you. Same, same thing. Just because I'm in this business, I'm not going to go 100% away. I may, I might travel more, may not be in front of the people doing the calls and things, but everybody has their own ways and, you know, their team of how they do things. Yeah, no, I think it's, you just hit on something that's real important and, and Landon kind of alluded to this, but he didn't go as far into, you know, the philosophy of what, of what we do, but in that exit strategy conversation with our with our clients it's always about are you financially ready and are you mentally ready right yeah. there's two different components and you can be financially ready and not mentally ready or you can be mentally ready and not financially ready and neither one is good correct right? and that brings up i have a little quote you mind if i read it yeah yeah so be more concerned about your character than you are your reputation because character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Mm. Yeah, very, very poignant. Thank you. I do a lot of, I like to read a lot of quotes and things and, you know, I come from nothing. You know, I come from the Midwest. I come from a single mom and it's just, I like to, you know, inspire and if I could put a, you know, just today's society and I'm going back, I know I'm jumping all over, but if you go to the grocery store and somebody's yelling and mad. You don't know what they've been through. They don't know if they lost their job, if they've been verbally abused or what. So we all need to take time with everything going on in life. Let's just be one. Let's, if you can put a smile on somebody's face or be kind in an email, you know what, you don't know what they're going through. So that's kind of how I live my life. I ain't perfect, but if I can try to put one smile on somebody's a day, I'm winning. Yeah. So. Yeah, I heard the other day, actually, somebody said something to the effect of everybody's your equal and you're better than nobody. Exactly. Right. And so I think if we all kept that in mind and realized that, you know, we're all members of the human race, the world would be a lot better. Oh. And we would just realize that by helping others that we're, you know, eventually it's going to come back to, to help us as well. But really, we're all in this world to help others to be better and to live right. a better life. Correct. And, you know, and just like going back to like other businesses, I've, I've got other businesses reach out and stuff. And I, it's, I don't look at it as jealous. I, I look at it as success if they feel threatened, you know? So yeah, 
to I totally agree. It's like you said, it's just the world that we live in is just, we got to come together and just, you know, whatever you're going through is come together and work together as a team. There's like everyone says, there's no I in team. Nobody can do everything alone. I couldn't, I can't do this company all alone. I have people in, behind the scenes that help me, but, but they know they're appreciated because some people don't get appreciated enough these days, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. So before I, before we let you go, I wanted to ask, and you can be as direct or indirect as you'd like to be, but you know, I think most people, most of our listeners included, even though most of our listeners are, are pretty successful in their own right, their business owners typically um, are looking at it and saying, you know, luxury travel, private aviation, that's beyond my reach from a financial standpoint. Can you give us some feedback on that? I mean, sure. give, you know, I don't know if you want to give us numbers, examples, whatever, so that people understand whether or not this is for them. Sure, sure. It's a great question. So a lot of a lot of sixty percent of the private aircrafts that fly are empty. It's all repositioning. It's all logistics. So um, th there's a term out there. I don't like to. I, I don't mind saying it. It's just not appropriate. It's called empty legs. It's an empty aircraft. So for instance, from Scottsdale to Vegas, it might be empty because the the client is already in Vegas. So that could be a seven passenger jet, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. Now that sounds expensive, but it's one way, seven people on jet. Um, it can get costly. I mean, you're talking East Coast, West Coast, thirty to fifty thousand dollars. But then again, you're talking how many air, how big of an aircraft are you doing a field stop? Are you? So there's a lot of logistics and things into it, but it's not for everybody. But I give options. I'll give you an idea. I had a client in Notting Hill in the UK last week and fly to France. He wanted, I got him a good deal. I know it was a good deal. I saved him by the day he wanted to leave. I gave him an alternative to day, leave a day later. And because of that, he saved $25,000 because the aircraft was already going to be over there anyway. So it's more logistics than what people know behind the scenes. I'm not going to say you're going to afford every flight. If you're looking to spend, a, you know, Ohio to Vegas for $1,000, no, fly first class. But if you, but realistically, you know, five to thirty thousand dollars in there but here's the thing i did a trip last year for um the raiders rams game took seven guys from the from oakland to la they all got to party tailgate flying a private jet home that day yeah that's a short flight it was about 3500 bucks a person now does that sound expensive for that kind of experience no but when you get seven people involved it's forty thousand dollars it sounds expensive, but there's ways of breaking things up, um, you know, so there's, there's ways around it. It's just a lot of it's who you trust. Same thing with your most expensive purchase in life is a house. Interest rate, who do you trust? You know, same thing with private aviation, cars, anything that you, it comes down to trust. Who do you trust? Who's going to give you the best options for you? Yeah. Hey, Scott, I, I got maybe one final question for you. And this just, just came up as you, we we're just speaking right there. Yes, Justin Bieber's going on tour next year. <laughs> okay, well, great to have you on the show. Talk to you later. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so um, you said something that got me thinking. Well, actually, I was thinking about this earlier in the conversation, but I forgot to mention it. So I was watching Shark Tank the other day. Okay. And they had a guy on, on Shark Tank, young guy, really young guy. He was like 21 or 22. And what he was doing, I thought, was so cool. He is essentially monetizing people's unused swimming pools and he's creating a business around it. And what you just said there made me think back to that. So if, if we understand this correctly, maybe this is what you're doing, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but you said that a lot of these jets that are flying all over the place are empty. So is that what you do in a sense is you, you tap into this market of these, of these inefficient trips and you, you help to fill those seats? Correct. Correct. So, but, the, but with mine, they don't, we don't share seats. Like, like it's not an Uber when people fly private, it's the whole aircraft. But what I do is I, what if I can get you LA to Vegas for a concert, you know, 10 people in a, in a plane and you go to a concert and it's, say it's fifteen, twenty thousand dollars It sounds expensive, but it's the experience. 
And so if you can do some of this stuff with cost effective, because there's aircraft out there that are flying around, it's all logistics, plan around it, you know, um, just like with, you know, give you an example. Super Bowl last year was in Miami. I had clients that booked five months in advance just because they know flying private is going to get more expensive. Miami was going to raise their prices of landing fees and all that stuff. So start thinking of an event. And even if you don't fly private, but you want to go somewhere, fly commercial. I have the relationships with the hotels. I have other relationships that you can utilize our services for. But that's why I created it exactly to, to give travel that I mean, typical people can, can, can afford. It's, you really just got to sit down and plan a, a, a right and make sure that they're, they're giving you the right options. Because like you said, is someone going to spend $50,000 to fly cross country? No. But if you can do an exper experience and it's a ball game or it's a spa day for the ladies or do this or do that, it's $10,000, $15,000 and you're drinking wine or whatever, that may be worth it. So, yeah. Or, yeah. it's your, or it's your twin's first birthday. I'm just saying, I hope T is listening. There you go. You want to put a little pony, on, a little Shetland pony on the plane or something and some balloons or, you know, you want to fly and say, I want to fly with a professional poker player and then land is on the plane. <laughs> and, you know, one thing I have working for me is I, I'm not a huge guy. So my chances of, of flying private right now would probably be, you know, I could fit in like an NBA player's suitcase. You know, they just stuff me in there and put me on the jet. And they can unzip it, you know, mid-flight, you know. Carry like on. That. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, hey, Scott, this has been a real pleasure having you on here. And uh, I, I've got a lot of great insights. And I, I, I feel better about myself just talking with you. So I, I thank you for that. And I think uh, everyone has appreciated uh, our conversation. So, how do people find you? There's going to be people that are going to want to track you down, look up the company. Where, where's the best places for them to go? Sure. You can go on adventjets.com, the website. Uh, you can call a toll-free number. It's 833-444-9494. Advent Jets is basically on the website is the easiest way to find us. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. Um, email info at adventjets.com for any questions or suggestions, thoughts. If you said I, I, I did something wrong, I don't care. Tell me and I'll, I'll, I'll get on the phone and I'll be a man and say, okay, this, did I say it wrong? You know, I take ownership if I do something wrong, but anything that I can do for anyone out there listening for business, for personal, if it, like I said, it doesn't have to be private aviation. If it's introductions, um, it's got to be a mutual beneficial. I'm not saying it's got to be financial, but I'm all about that because at the end of the day, we all win. And so I appreciate the camp kind words, Landon. I take back the Justin Bieber. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so even if, they, even if they wanted to call you and talk about Brett Favre leaving the, the Packers to go to the Vikings at the end of his career and oh. – You'd be well, happy to have that conversation. I can tell you, know, I got some inside stories about Brett Favre. We've actually um, hung out together and partied together. So I, I got a lot of sports stories that I could share. And actually, he was just in Tampa at the Bucks game. I don't know if you saw it, but he was wearing a Tampa Bay Buccaneers t-shirt. Tom Brady invited him down there. But yeah, if, they, if people want to talk about Packers, I mean, I'm just a general sports fan to begin with. So um, yeah, um, drop me a line. All right. Well, we really appreciate you being here today, Scott, and uh, we appreciate the, the info that you've given us, the insight, and uh, the comedic back and forth between all three <laughs> of us. So that always I, makes the episode that much more interesting. I appreciate your time, Austin and Landon. Look forward to uh, speaking with you guys again and uh, us building a friendship. All right. Thank you Thanks very much. Lot, Scott. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.
We are off air, still recording via video, but we are off air for now. Holy cow, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was great. Yep. Appreciate it. Like I said, I just kind of ramble and go on and on. But that's just who I am. It's fascinating the different types of guests that we have, not only with Tycoons of Small Biz, but with all the shows we do here at Business Radio X. Uh, we had a recent episode that kind of felt, felt a little bit flat, and this feels good to just go, wow, okay, this is what these conversations are all about. So thank you for being part of that for us. And uh, yeah, the banter was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean that, though. If there's anything that I can do for you guys, reach out. I mean, I'll give you my personal email. I can give you my cell number. Like I said, it's just... That's how I was just raised. I mean, what you get is what you get. And I'm not one of those to, get, I don't bullshit the bullshit or tell people this. I, I, I'm just real, you know. I ain't perfect, but um, when you work with like-minded people, good things happen. And I'm just lucky to build all everything natural, you know. Yeah. That's these two guys. That's what I found in sitting here each week with these guys for what, three, three or four months now. You are uh, all like-minded folks. Before I um, have uh, Austin come around the table and do a photo with a big uh, screen on the wall, I'd like to take one uh, with a video recording. So okay. if you could just smile into your camera for a couple of seconds here. I'll do a, uh, a few screenshots and then we'll go from there. Should I bring my dog into it? No, I'm just kidding. You can. You can. can. You can. 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 Absolutely. No, all right, smile for me. All right, excellent. And then Landon and I are, or not Landon, I did that again. What the heck? I don't know why I keep doing that. Austin, I, I did that last it's week. It's the beaver. It's the beaver. They, they look so much alike and they act so much alike that I just, uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, we're going to do dosey do around the table here real quick and then um, we'll take a photo with uh, the two of you on the screen and Austin. Austin, can you hit your, um, your screen off and I'll do the same. So give us a second here, guys, and we'll swap, sure. swap seats. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, right? Uh, hang on. I forgot to put it up on the wall. All right. I did a little bit differently today and, and kept the... TV off the wall, so it was just the three of you. So let me move seats here. All right, Landon, you can hear me okay? Very good. All right, guys, just smile again for me, please. And looking at them. Perfect. Hang tight. We'll come around and say goodbye. We hate goodbye. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Scott, what kind of what? I know it's a rescue dog, but oh yeah, that's right. You said it was a, a, a uh, Shih Tzu, Chihuahua, or a shi oh, Shih Tzu. Okay. Oh yeah. Hey bud, Brody, say hi. Cute. <laughs> Thanks. So I also have a golden doodle, but I have a I have a mini. She's only about thirty pounds. Oh wow. 